Good morning. Good morning. I don't know if this church has ever been that quiet right before worship at our. It's kind of a weird feeling. Um, Columbus Day is tomorrow, um, so the office is closed, right? Yes, it is. Um, so, but on Tuesday this week, um, I've ordered 125 mums. Um, we do a mums fundraiser at school every year at Middletown North. And uh, she's the, they were coming to deliver on Tuesday. I don't know exactly what time, but I said, you know what? I'll get 125 for church. So uh, I don't know exactly what time they'll be here. Um, but if you'd like to come by and pick up a mum or two, um, we're going to use the others to decorate. And, uh, but if you want to make a donation and take some, um, have at it. Uh, they'll be here, obviously, for Wednesday. We're going to put them over in between on the grass over there. Uh, and so they'll... There should be some left for next weekend, but if you want to come by, you want to make any kind of donation, we'll uh, put the money towards uh, the evangelism uh, of the church and also towards the flower fund so that we continue to have flowers every week. Uh, but they'll be here. I do want to caution everybody, mums grow in dirt. Um, my students are often unaware of this fact each year. So they, dirt is dirty, hence the name of the word. So there may be dirt on them if you come and get some. Um, I think we have some extra garbage bags here, but just in case, if you're putting some in the trunk, it's gonna be assorted colors, first come, first serve, uh, and we'll put them out. So again, hopefully Tuesday delivery for moms, but stop by, or if you're quilting on Wednesday or here during the week, feel free to take a couple. If you wanna make a donation, that's great. If not, decorate, bring them to church members that might be homebound or other people and guilt them into coming to church. So, but good to see you. Yes, guilt is a, a great motivator. President Christ, good morning, good morning. I hope everyone is feeling cool this morning. It is, it, it, it is, it is the fall, right? It is the fall and it's, and it's Wonderful to come outside and feel that nice, uh, crisp, cool weather. And I apologize to uh, the folks who are Yankee fans, but I have to gloat a little bit right now, being a Mets fan. For those of you who may not be familiar with baseball or, or follow baseball, the Mets had to win last night's game to stay in the running to go uh, to the, the playoffs, and they did. And, and, and now today, they definitely have to win in order to advance. <laughs> so. For those of you who are Mets fans, I see that you're smiling just as much as I am this morning. So, um, friends in Christ, this morning we are, are gathered together this morning uh, to celebrate the uh, uh, Lauren and Justin uh, Griff bringing their daughter, <laughs> bringing their daughter Juliet to receive the sacrament of holy baptism this morning during our service. So. Um, welcome and welcome to all the family and friends who are going to be uh, going to be uh, uh, taking place and, and observing uh, that that ceremony uh, this morning. Uh, just uh, two or three quick announcements and uh, just a reminder: next week is the crop walk, and if you, uh, I, I I know Molly, Molly Ford can she if, if you want to know more about that and how you might be able to volunteer and help out. I, it's, I'm sorry, it's my first time. So with water and distributing water and things like that, and food, <laughs> and food, so. Ooh, okay. And, and now there, so. Okay, thank you. Um, the second announcement is just a reminder that it's coming up with our annual uh, garage sale. That's going to be on, uh, on October, uh, 28th, 29th, and 30th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and uh, on a Sunday. So I invite, invite those of you who, are, who want to come in and buy some good stuff to come, to come out uh, on, on, those, uh, on those days. And the uh, second or third announcement that I want to make is just a reminder that coming up on October 29th, I believe, is going to be our uh, second annual Trunker Week celebration, and I think Alice is going to share a little bit more about that with us. 
Yes, I just want to make a quick announcement. Hello. Um, make sure to check our Facebook page because I've made events for both the garage sale and the trunk tree. And so far we have about 99 people who are either interested or going to the trunk tree. And I started the garage sale a little later. So we have about like 15 ish people for the garage sale. So go to the Facebook page and share the events. That way your friends who live nearby know that we're doing this and can also see like the flyers, see the times and see all the information. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. And um, the, the, the last announcement that I wanted to make is yesterday I participated in what's called a, a uh, it was called a clergy cops in community prayer breakfast over at First Baptist uh, Church over on one on, on uh, Maple Avenue or Maple Street, and um, I happened to meet uh, the uh, mayor of Red Bank, uh, Mayor Pasquale Mena, and uh, in, in, in our uh, I had met him before, and he so we sort of he sort of like knows a little bit about me, but. When I saw him yesterday, the first thing he does is he comes up to me and he says to me, uh, when you see Peter Richard, tell him I said hello. <laughs> so Peter, are you in trouble with the mayor? Are you just... <laughs> it, it must be pretty cool that the, the, the mayor of Red Bank knows you by name. Infamous. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter, but the mayor says hello to you. <laughs> Friends in Christ, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning as we are blessed with today's presence from Peter. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in any direction. Show us the path that leads to love. We are refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. 
God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 865, Praise Thy Soul, the King of Heaven. <laughs> Our service is going to continue with the words of the, of the profession of faith. To, <laughs> to, uh, to Lauren and, and, and Justin and, and everyone else gathered together this morning, I ask you to profess uh, this assembly, to profess your faith in Christ. Confess then and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Oh, you know what? I am going, I am jumping all over the place. You got me all mixed up, young lady. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. Friends, God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of holy baptism. By water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us up to new life in Jesus the Christ. We are united with all of that ties in one body in Jesus Christ. We are anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we are joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Ah! And to now, <laughs> to, to, uh, to, to Lord and Justin, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in God's grace and the love of God. Do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? If so, say we do. We do. As you bring Juliet to receive the gift of holy baptism, 
You are entrusted with the responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God in the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the truth, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture in her faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ in the word and deed, care for others and the world God has made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say we do. We do. Wonderful. And to our sponsors this morning. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Juliet in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? If so, say we do. And to the entire assembly gathered here this morning. People of God, do you promise to support Juliet and pray for her and her in her life in Christ? If so, say we do. We, we, do. we do. I invite you to please stand if you are able. And now our service will continue with the profession of faith. <laughs> People of God, I ask you, do you profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? We do renounce, renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus the Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' his death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to new life in you. Good and gracious God, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. 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 And now the congregation, you may, you may be seated. As I don't think we have any young ones in here. No, it's many young ones, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is time for, for, for Julia. It's time for you to have one. Oh, you want to come up with Jody's? No yeah, cracker. It, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh-oh. That's okay. I promise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
<laughs> she was practicing. <laughs> Friends in Christ, let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through the through water and the Holy Spirit, you give life into your daughters and sons, new birth, and you cleanse them from sin, and you raise them into eternal life. Sustain Juliet with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. A little, a little oil for you. Oh, it's not that. I didn't even get on yet. You only do yet. Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and Mark with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in <laughs> heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Lauren and Justin and all who help raise this child in faith. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally the salvation that you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ. And into the mission of each prayer. We are going to give thanks and praise to God. And there is not a spirit and redeeming word for all worlds. Amen. Our baptismal hymn is number 453. If you please stand and join me in singing. Jesus the Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. 
and the uh, congregation, you may be seated at this time for the reading and the hearing of God's word this morning. <clears throat> The first reading is from the second book of Kings, the fifth chapter. <laughs> now, the commander of the army of the king of Aram was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man through a mighty warrior suffered from leprosy. Now, the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel. And she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were with the prophet who is Saint, who is in Saint Maria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elijah's house. Elijah sent a messenger to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times in your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that from me he would surely come out and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Barkar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servant approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Here ends the first reading. We will now read the psalm together. I will read the odd verses, and the congregation will read the even verses in both. Hallelujah, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonder to be remembered, your grace is full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works, and given them the land to the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your pre precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done with truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All the practices have a good understanding. God is ready to be with forever. The second reading is from the book of Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained by the criminal. But the word of God is not changed. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. 
if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Here ends the reading. <laughs> Yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God, except this foreigner? Then he said to them, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise, praise to our Lord. Christ. And the congregation we made to you. People of God, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Has anyone in here ever had shingles or knows of an individual who's had shingles? No, I'm, I'm not talking about the shingles or your house. I'm talking about the, the I'm talking about that virus that you get uh, called shingles. And for those of you who've ever had shingles or know someone who has shingles. You, you, you know, it's, it's very, very painful. And, and if you've ever seen someone with shingles, sometimes they have like a, a, a rash that goes in like some like a, a lateral type of um, configuration. And, 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 and sometimes this rash is accompanied by these very, very uh, painful fluid filled bumps. I, I, I know several individuals who have had shingles and they've said, you wouldn't wish shingles on your worst enemy. Now, how many of you have ever had chicken pox? <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, when you talk about shingles, there, there are a few who probably know of folks who have had shingles, but when you talk about chicken pox, I think sometimes we can all think about uh, growing up and, and, and having chicken pox ourselves or knowing someone who's had chicken pox. And I can, I can remember when anyone in the house, in our house, uh, got chicken pox, we so had to sort of like stay away from them because chicken pox were really contagious. And, and the, the other way that it, it, when in thinking about chicken pox, and you knew someone had chicken pox, I mean, it's, 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 I, I, at least from what I read, the, the shingles virus and the chicken pox virus are, are very similar because they come from the, the, the same, they emanate from the, the same virus. But I remember as a youngster uh, going to school, you always knew a, a kid that had chicken pox because he was covered or she was covered with calamine lotion. <laughs> because the calamine lotion would, would, would soothe the, the, the itchiness and the bumps that would sometimes come up as, or, as a result of having 
making chicken pox. And I, I can recall when it, when, when, whenever they, they, they would, uh, uh, one, one uh, student got chicken pox, you could just bet there was another person they would get chicken pox. And it was, it was sort of like, it, it, it would like go around to the point where you had a little colony of, 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 of calamine lotion students of all. <laughs> All dealing with having chicken pox. Today, friends in Christ, we hear a story in uh, Luke's gospel about 10 individuals who are also uh, dealing with a skin ailment. A skin ailment that sometimes people refer to as being leprosy. But it could be, in, when you look at it, it really could have been any type of skin ailment. And in, in, in our gospel this morning, our gospel begins by saying as Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he passed through the region between Samaria and Galilee. Now, it's, it's, it's interesting that, uh, that he's passing through uh, this area, Galilee, where he, where he began his ministry. And he's also going through this area called, called Samaria. And I think I, I, I think I may have shared with, uh, with the congregation, and I think it was in the story of the Good Samaritan uh, that, that, that Jews and Samaritans, they didn't, they, uh, they didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things, and they locked heads on a lot of things. And um, is, 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 is there a matter of fact, um, the Samaritans, they, 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 they had their own temple. Samaritans, they had their own priests. So Samaritans followed their own version of Moses' law. So there, there was a, a lot of things that, that were, were points of contention between Jews and Samaritans. And in our story this morning, it says that as Jesus entered the village, Ten lepers approached him. Now, there are two things that we sort of need. I need to share a little bit of a background about this skin disease, or or some people would uh, refer to as being leprosy. Uh, when an individual had any type of skin ailment, leprosy in this case, they had to keep their they had to keep their distance away from the community. As a matter of fact, they were literally removed because of their skin condition. They were literally removed away from the, 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 the community. They were so, somewhat, I guess you could say, they were somewhat like outsiders. And, 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 and according to the re religious law, if, if someone to were to come near someone that had leprosy, the, the, the lepers would have to cry out, unclean, 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 because uh, the, 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 they had to, to warn others that, they had this skin condition that could, uh, that that that, um, they, that someone else could possibly catch, and and uh, they wanted to warn others to stay away from them. Well, in our story, the, the, the these lepers they don't they don't shout out un, un, unclean. It, it, instead, they shout out, "Master Jesus, have mercy on us. Have mercy." On us. It's interesting in what happens next in our story. Jesus doesn't go up and, 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 and touch them like he does in some other healing stories that we might read about in the gospel. Like there was one story where uh, a, a man who, who what could couldn't hear and couldn't see, and Jesus would sometimes go and he would make a, a, a compress out of mud and put put it on a person's uh, eyes and 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 they would see, or he would put, put put lay their hands on them and the individual would be able to hear or stand up and walk. Jesus doesn't do any of that in our story this morning. Instead, Jesus simply says to them, "Go and show yourselves." To the priest. Go and show yourselves to the priest. And, 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 and the reason why Jesus does this is it, 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 it's because the, the, the priests were the ones who would who, who would give their, their okay, give their stamp of approval 
for these lepers to, to uh, come back in, in, into into the community. So they had to sort of they had to go and, and show themselves to the priests uh, that 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 they, that they they were that they were healed. And and in our story, as they're going along, uh, one of the one of the lepers. I don't know. He must have. He must have seen that that that, 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 that he was healed, and and, 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 he, and he turns around and and, and he, he runs back to Jesus, and and, and he gives and he, and he starts he starts praising God, and and he falls down at at, at Jesus' feet, and when Jesus sees them, when Jesus sees him, he says, "Weren't." Ten made clean. Why? What? What? What happened to the other nine? And, and, and in, our, in our story, Jesus goes on to say, "What? What happened to them? Where did they go? Was was wasn't any of the other lepers? Didn't any of any of them think to come back and, 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 and give thanks and praise to God? Get up." And go on your way, Jesus says, because your faith has made you well. Right before Jesus says this, he 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 he, he not only says, "Wasn't there nine? Where are the other nine? He says, "Is it just this one person who comes back to give thanks and praise to God?" And not only did Jesus say that it, it, this, this man was a foreigner, he says that this one person that came back was a, was a Samaritan. Was a Samaritan. I, I find that interesting, don't you? You remember, you remember in the story of the Good Samaritan where the, 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 the three individuals were walking down the, the roadway and they pass by this, this man, it, it's all beat up and bruised along the roadway. And as Jesus is telling this story, uh, the, 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 the most unlikely person to come to help the man that was beat up along the road was the Samaritan. Well, in this story, can you imagine Jesus is here? They're like saying, wait a minute. You mean this foreigner? You mean this Samaritan was the only one that, 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 that felt that he, that he should come back and give thanks and praise to God? Well, I, 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 don't get me wrong. I don't want to beat up on the other nine. Because honestly, when you really think about it, the, 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 the other nine, they were just doing what Jesus told them to do, didn't they? Didn't they? Jesus said to, to, to them, "Go and, and to sh show yourselves to the priest." So we can't we, we 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 can't look too harshly on the other nine, but we can lift up. We can lift up this one who came back, this one who came back to 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 give thanks and and and, and praise to God uh, for for all was God was doing and all God did. There's a there's a little bit of a running there's a little bit of a running joke amongst folks in the Lutheran Church. We may not we may not get it this morning because there's so many folks that are sitting up front. But there's a, a running joke in, in some Lutheran circles. No one wants to sit in the first pew. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 for those of you who've ever been to a, a Lutheran church, you, I invite you to go and look and see. And when you go in there, most of the time, or at least 99.9% .9 of the time, those first few pews in the Lutheran church are, are, are empty. It, it seems like there's, it's like around the fourth and the fifth pew where people start to sit. We like to... We like to be 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 close when we're at say where we we're at sporting events or when we are, are, are at, at concerts and musicals. We, we 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 like to be close when we are at, at like awards shows. But it, when it comes to worship, sometimes we don't like to be too close because that closeness 
that closeness sometimes can it can sometimes be referred to as being intimate with God, being close with Jesus. And sometimes being close to Jesus, it, 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 it scares us and, and it makes us fearful. Because when we get close to Jesus, then we got to take, start taking seriously those words that are written in the Bible, don't we? Those, those stories of, of, about, uh, about, uh, about loving others, see, especially those that we don't, we don't, we don't care too, too deeply about. Sometimes we have to take, take seriously those stories where Jesus talked about forgiveness. You remember the story where so where Jesus was uh, it was teaching his disciples about forgiveness, and one person came up to Jesus and said, "Well, Jesus, if somebody uh, does me wrong, does me dirty seven times, and and says seven times, I you know, will you forgive me?" And they keep uh, and they keep on doing it again. Do I still have to forgive them? And Jesus says, "Yeah, yeah, you need you need to forgive them." And then there's another story where uh, someone comes up to Jesus and says, Jesus, how many times should I forgive a person? Seven times? And Jesus responds by saying, not seven times, but 70 times, seven times. When we, when we get too close to Jesus, sometimes it makes us fearful because Jesus changes us. Jesus makes us different. Jesus re re reforms us. And I guess you can say Jesus heals us and makes us. <coughs> Calamine lotion kids. <laughs> I remember how big in school, everybody kept their distance from those pink lotion Calamine kids in school. Those nine lepers, it seems like they kept their distance away from Jesus, except for that one. That one leper did everything he could but keep his distance from Jesus. Friends in Christ, though we might try to keep our distance from Jesus, Jesus doesn't keep his distance from us. In each and every turn of life, we can see many ways that how Jesus extends his gift of mercy and love to us. Jesus extends his gift of mercy and love to us at the font that Juliet just received this morning as she was baptized uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ meets us when we when, when we gather together in the world service and, and we, we go up to one another and we say, God's peace be with you. And our neighbors respond by saying, and also with you. Jesus meets us in the bread and the wine, reminding us that that precious gift is a reminder that Jesus is always with us. So, friends in Christ, what ways is Jesus trying to get close to you this morning? I have news for you. Regardless of how many ways we may try to avoid Jesus' love, Jesus' love is always, always there for us. And to be honest with you, friends, when we get close to Jesus and Jesus gets close to us, it changes us and makes us more like him. Thanks be God. Amen. <laughs>
Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons, inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O oh God. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O oh God. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God. <laughs> Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, feel feelings of rejection, or those who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministry of this congregation and community. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that you give strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, and all in need. Especially, we pray for Grace, Phyllis, Gail, Linda, Fran, Loris, Larry, Jimmy, Joe, Alain, Nancy, Debbie, Megan, Andrea, Tom, Ryan, Leanne, Yamina, Joan, and Brittany. We also pray for Juliet and all others receiving the sacrament of holy baptism this day. We pray for James, Liz, and baby, for comfort for TD, healing for Jerry Metzel. We pray, Lord, for those impacted by Hurricane Ian and all others across our country and around the world living in aftermath of dangerous weather. People of Ukraine, Russia, and neighboring countries affected by war. We pray for those whose lives have been affected by gun violence. We pray for the immigrants searching for safety and sanctuary. For those who have been impacted from breast cancer. For all of us, we pray for peace, protection, and harmony in our world. And we pray for all of us who are lonely and have no one to pray for them. God of grace. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew in our trust, renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God. Give our sin praise. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God. Through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And now may we share uh, a moment of Christ's peace with one another, which will be followed by our offer. <laughs>
silver tray. You can grab an empty uh, glass, and when you gather around the altar rail, the uh, assisting minister will fill your cup with uh, with wine after you receive the host from me. Uh, for those of you who would like to commune uh, with grape juice, um, you don't have to pick up one of the empty uh, individual uh, cups. We have uh, cups up here filled with grape juice for you, so uh, you can, if you care to commune that way, you can do that also. And also for individuals who uh, who uh, are um, with desire to have a gluten-free wafer, we do have gluten-free wafers up here for individuals. Just let me know uh, as I come to you that you would like a gluten-free wafer, and then I will provide one for you. So our service is going to continue now, friends with the celebration of our Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection. Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending. <laughs>
betrayed our Lord Jesus, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, take and eat of it, all of you. This bread is my body, which will soon be broken for you, and whenever you eat of it, remember me. Amen. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took a cup, and again, after giving thanks, he gave it for all of them to drink, and he said to them, take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. And whenever you drink of it, remember me. Amen. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O my Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, friends, let us pray together to pray our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Lord's prayer. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we give those who trespass against us, and we have stopped the temptation, but the living of the evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the glory. Amen. Let me serve you in this life to abide your grace. I come to your glorious kingdom and the living peace. Christ invites you to the table. Come, taste, and see. Thank you, God. Please be seated, and you can join in our communion with our page 15 and 16 of the bullet. <laughs>
Friends, I invite you to please stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, may it strengthen you and may it keep you in God's grace. Amen. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we may serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I invite the congregation to please remain standing for our blessing. Good morning. What happened to you? What happened to you? Oh, she's in the back. It's not easy. You see, without water or beauty, it's not easy. Again, uh, well, we are going to be again, uh, well, look, welcome uh, to, the, uh, to our uh, church family and blessings to you and your, your, your family and all your friends who uh, came to. Uh, see the baptism, witness the baptism, and please um, feel free to come back and come back again. People of God, I invite you to receive the blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace, and may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. 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 If you're a Giants fan, go to coffee hour. You're not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> They're behind. Uh, the moms this week are for everybody. So if you can take one to someone, a congregation member, or someone to encourage to come to church, they should be here Tuesday. Swing by and pick them up. Um, it's first come, first serve on colors. So they'll be here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and do come back if you're a visitor. Our closing hymn is number 547 in the hymn. Thank mm -hmm. you.